أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How is Ramadan going for you guys? Welcome back to my Ramadan series, Understanding Quran with Nafisa. I hope you are enjoying the episodes so far. I hope you're finding it beneficial. I hope it is hitting home, right? Because I know for me, whew, especially the last couple of videos have really hit home for me. I was, oh, Allah Akbar, I, I, I've been really enjoying recording this for you guys. All right, ladies. So today we're going to continue from verse 123 of Surah An Nisa. So we continue. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem. Bismillahi Rahmani Rahim. Divine grace is neither by your wishes nor those of the people of the book. Whoever commits evil will be rewarded accordingly and they will find no protector or helper besides Allah. But those who do good, whether male or female, and have faith will enter paradise and will never be wronged, even as much as the speck of a date stone. And who is better in faith than those who fully submit themselves to Allah and do good and follow the way of Abraham? The upright Allah chose Abraham as a close friend. To Allah alone belongs whatever's in the heavens and the earth. And Allah is truly aware of everything. They ask you, O Prophet wasallam, regarding women, say, it is Allah who instructs you regarding them. Instruction has already been revealed in the book concerning the orphan women you deprive of their due rights, but still wish to marry. Also, helpless children, as well as standing up for orphans' rights. And whatever good you do is certainly well known to Allah. If a woman fears indifference or neglect from her husband, there is no blame on either of them if they seek fair settlement, which is best. Humans are ever inclined to selfishness. But if you are gracious and mindful of Allah, surely Allah is all aware of what you do. You will never be able to maintain emotional justice between your wives no matter how keen you are. So do not totally incline towards one, leaving the other in suspense. And if you do what is right and are mindful of Allah, surely Allah is all forgiving, most merciful. But if they choose to separate, Allah will enrich both of them from his bounties and Allah is ever bountiful, all wise. So we're going to go back up to verse 123, where we begun today's session, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that divine grace is neither by your wishes nor those of the book. Whoever commits evil will be rewarded accordingly and they will find no protector or helper against Allah. Meaning that Allah's blessings is not based upon our wishes. He's not going to give according to who we think he should be giving. And whoever commits evil will be rewarded accordingly. And they will not find any help against Allah. I think about this last, the last part of this verse a lot. When Allah says, you will not find any help against Allah. That should be enough as dawah for you and I. It should be enough as dawah. Because once we've left this life, and the angel of death has come and taken our soul away. And we are in our graves onwards. If Allah is against us, what hope do we have? We don't. So it's, it's not worth. It's not worth seeking other people's approval against what pleases Allah. Because in the end, it is your soul and Allah alone. 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 So Allah says in verse 124, but those who do good, whether male or female, and have faith, they will enter paradise and they will never be wronged. Again, Allah's using that impression, even as much as the speck of a date stone, they will not be wrong in the least. If they do good, they will be where? 
they will be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with paradise, right? They will be rewarded with paradise. So we should never be afraid that when we do good deeds, that our good deeds are lost. If we do it with a sincere heart, your deeds are never lost. Forget doing good deeds to make someone happy because they will only be happy with you as far as they're getting something from you. The day you don't have to do for them or the day you decide not to do for them, you are going to become an enemy. They will forget that you ever did anything for them. That is humankind for you. And that's one of the reasons why when we do good deeds, always say, Allah, I'm doing it because I want to make you happy. I want you to be happy with me. I want to use my wealth in a way that you will be pleased with. I want, I'm, I'm hoping for your reward. It should only be about what you're doing and Allah. Even though there's a middle person who's benefiting from it, forget that person. Because if you make it about that person, they will make you regret that you ever did any good for them. So Allah continues to say, and who is better in faith than those who fully submit themselves to Allah? And by the way, fully submitting yourself to Allah doesn't mean you're perfect. Because Allah never created us to be perfect. But it's that they are people who continuously strive to, to do better, to be better, to get better. They are always striving. When they fail, they ask for forgiveness. They try to get back on. They, they're just always trying. They will always be failing because that's the nature of human, right? There will always be a part of you that's imperfect. There will always be a flaw that you have as a human. But you're always striving, right? And those who strive more than others are rewarded more than others, right? It's only fair. So Allah says, to Allah alone belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth. And Allah is fully aware of everything. Now we move on to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, They ask you, O Prophet, regarding women. Say, it is Allah who instructs you regarding them. Meaning Allah has given you instructions about how to deal with and treat your women. So Allah gives a reminder. He says, he has given the instructions the instructions have already been revealed in the book. If you follow this whole surah, you know from the beginning there were instructions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave within this surah, surah and nisa about how women should be treated, who you can marry, what kind of woman you can't marry. Allah has already given the instruction. So Allah is saying here, the instruction has already been given, right? And Allah says, concerning the orphan women, when you deprive of their right, due rights, Right? If you deprive the orphan of his of the orphan woman of his due rights, what's gonna happen? He's given instructions there. But still wish to marry. Also, helpless children. Allah gave examples about how we should treat orphans. Orphans are an example of helpless children, as well as standing up for orphans' rights. Allah has covered all of that, and indeed Allah spoke the truth because in the beginning of the surah. We have explored all of that and Allah has mentioned all of that. And Allah says, and whatever good you do is certainly well known to Allah. Certainly. It doesn't, it never, Allah doesn't forget the good deeds that we do. We can forget. We can forget. People can say to you, oh, do you remember that time you did this for me? And you'd be like, I don't even remember that. But Allah doesn't forget. He doesn't at all. So Allah says, if a woman fears indifference or neglect from her husband, there is no blame on either of them, meaning her or her husband, if they seek a fair settlement. What, what is this talking about? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that humans are ever inclined to selfishness. You know, when I read this the first time and I was like, oh, what came to mind here is that at the end of the day, whether we want to admit it or not, us human beings are selfish. We're selfish. When it comes down to it, we're going to put ourselves first. That's usually what happens. And unfortunately, when it comes to polygamy, men don't like to hear this. But yes, you, you're following sunnah. But can you admit that it's, it's a selfish decision? It pleases you. Because you may want a woman. Your wife may not want her. Your children may not want her. But you're going to marry her because you want her. Can we admit that that's a selfish choice? But no, <laughs> they won't want to admit that because they won't want to admit that because it's painful to have to admit that. Oh, oh my God, it means I'm a selfish person that I make selfish decisions. No, 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 that's not what it is. I'm trying to save the world. That's why I'm doing it. Anyways, maybe some men are really are trying to, you know, help the society. But if they really, but a lot of them, if they really want to be honest with themselves, it's a selfish decision. Allah says humans are ever inclined to selfishness. 
Mm -hmm. But if you are gracious and mindful of Allah, we have to be mindful of Allah throughout the whole deciding whether or not you're going to separate, even before that, like putting in the effort to see if the marriage can work. All of that has to come with a lot of gracefulness and a lot of, a lot of, and a lot of um, consciousness of Allah. Like if you're not going to be conscious of Allah, you're going to make a lot of mistakes. You're going to end up destroying your, mar your marriage for no reason. You're going to end up harming somebody else and your selfishness and ego is just going to take lead, right? And that is going to harm a lot of things. So Allah says it's going to require you to be mindful of Allah in every step of the way. And this is where a lot of people fail. Being mindful of Allah when it comes to the way we treat one another, the husband and the wife, the marital relation. Can we be conscious of Allah in that? May Allah help us to be those who are conscious of Allah in terms of how we treat our spouses. I mean, so Allah says, surely Allah is all of aware of what you do. This is a warning. Allah knows what you're doing. You can deceive other people, but you can't deceive Allah. He's, he sees right through you. He knows it. We must be conscious of Allah. Allah then goes on to say, you will never be able to maintain emotional justice between your wives. Mm. Ain't that the truth? Ain't that the truth, okay? You will never be able to, to maintain emotional justice between your wives, no matter how keen you are. No matter how much you try, you will never be able to do it. So then what? So do not totally incline towards one, leaving the other in suspense. Men, I don't care, sisters. You can take this portion of the video and share it to my brothers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Nisa to the men, you cannot, no matter how keen you are, maintain emotional justice between your wives. So do not totally incline towards one, leaving the other in suspense. Not to my words, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does that mean? It means just because you love one woman more than the other, you shouldn't abandon the other woman for the one that you love whilst you're still married to the two of them. Don't do that. If you do that, you are sinful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recognizes that you cannot emotionally love them equally. Now, some men may come here and be like, I love all of my wives equally. Allah says you can't. Emotionally, you cannot do justice between your wives. But Allah says, do not neglect one of your wives because you prefer the other. What some men do once they enter polygamy, forget the old wife. She's a problem. She's causing me sadness. So what you do every day, you are in the house of your new wife. Every, every exciting thing you're doing is with your new wife. The old one, she's been used and dumped and you couldn't care less about her. She's giving me a problem. You come to her house, you don't want to eat her food. You go to your new wife, you eat with her, you joy with her. Oh, because she makes me happy. Yeah, for now. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do not do that. If you fully incline yourself to one neglecting the other, you're leaving the other one in suspense. You don't know the, the emotional damage you cause. You can't know. You've never been a woman. You can never know how much pain you're causing to your other wife that you are neglecting because you found a new shiny thing. Soon enough, that new wife is going to start showing her flaws. You're going to realize she's not as perfect as I thought. Then you're going to gather so many wives if you decide to marry up to four. You're going to realize none of them are perfect. <laughs> In fact, this whole polygamy thing is hard work. A message to my sisters. This goes to show that... It is not possible for a man to fully do justice emotionally towards everyone, towards all of his wives. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard to do that. But his treatment, in his treatment, he must treat his women fairly. And he must try to do his best to be present emotionally for both of his wives, or all four of them, if he has four, however many number he has, cannot marry more than four. A man must try his best to treat his wives well. Yeah, you're having a bad day with this one, but it's her day with you. You have to go to her house. Sisters, why is it that we're doing this? So because you know your husband's having a problem with your 
in Yoruba with your Iyale. Iyale is like the, the first wife in, in the Yoruba language, right? So because your, your husband is having a problem with his first wife, you know it's not the day for him to be with you. But he comes to you and you welcome him happily you, as, as the good wife that you are. Knowing that it's not your day. Why are you doing that? You are contributing to the problem. Send him back. Tell him it's not your day. I'm not going to allow you to stay here. You're not going to sleep here. And if you decide you're going to be angry with me as well, no problem. But you're not going to stay here today because it's not your day. Go to the wife whose day it is. So they can have a chance to mend their marriage. But again, because humans are inclined towards themselves and their own selfishness, you're happy that he's in your home. Because hopefully this marriage don't work. So you can become the only wife. Allah sees what is in our hearts. Let's not mistreat one another. Allah will hold us accountable. Allah says to the men, do not do that. If you do that, you're spending all your time with one wife, you're neglecting the other one, yet you're married to the two of them. Allah's going to hold you accountable, dear men. So Allah says, and if you do what is right and you are mindful of Allah, surely Allah is all forgiving, most merciful. If you do what's right, that is the condition. You have to do what's right. And before you can know what the right thing is, you have to read the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you have to make yourself aware of what the right thing is. Most men do polygamy. The only thing they know about Islam is that Allah has allowed them to do polygamy. They don't know about what the conditions of polygamy is. They don't know about how to manage the multiple wives that they have. They just know that they can marry, so they just go and they dip themselves into it, not knowing that if you get yourself involved in polygamy and you are not just to the best of your ability to your wives, you are giving yourself a VIP ticket to hell. Because the wrong that you are going to be doing to one wife is oppression. And oppression is darkness on the day of judgment. Now some may be thinking, yeah, darkness, I'm not exactly going to hell because it's dark. You need light on the day of judgment. You need light. So if all you have is a whole bunch of darkness, what light are you going to be able to use to see so you can cross the sirat? We're all going to cross the sirat, which is thinner than a piece of hair. We're all going to have to cross that bridge. How can you cross that bridge when you can't see where you're going? It's thinner than the hair. You take one wrong step, underneath the sirat is the hellfire. You take one wrong step and you're going down. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that. Allah does not like injustices to be done. So polygamy is not something to be engaged in with the light heart. It is, it is, it's, a, it's a huge responsibility. A huge responsibility. And they say with more blessings comes more responsibilities. So may Allah help our brothers to be able to uphold this. Ameen. So then our final verse for today, Allah says, But if they chose to separate, Allah will do what? Enrich both of them from his bounties. And Allah is ever bountiful or wise. And some say, no, don't ever separate. Stay together no matter what. Stay together no matter what. Let me tell you, I am an advocate for marriages staying together because I know it's one of the goals of shaitan to separate a husband from his wife. However, it gets to a point where too much is too much. Where you staying with that person is going to endanger you. Now, if you haven't seen my video about what to do before you leave your husband, watch that video. After you've explored all of your options and you've tried to be patient, you've given him multiple tries and everything, if it doesn't work, it's okay to find an amicable, amicable way of separating. Not that one person should deceive the other person into separation. No, come to an agreement, an amicable agreement and do it in a good way. Do it in a good way that one day you can feel at peace about the way I did this was good. When in your heart you know the way you did this was wrong, you're going to have to carry that burden. And Allah is the best judges of everything. But Allah says that if you choose to separate with good reason and within the boundaries of Islam, not just that I don't like this person, I'm, I'm out. No, if you choose to separate with good reason, Allah says that Allah will enrich both of you, the man and the woman, not the man alone and not the woman alone. Allah says the man and the woman, he would enrich you with his bounties and Allah is ever bountiful or wise. 
Allah is ever bountiful or wise. Allah has plenty. Some of us women, when we separate from our husbands, when we get divorced because we were just, we were just getting abuse after abuse after abuse and we are afraid for our lives, we then begin to worry about provision. Allah says he is bountiful. Allah is going to give you all the permission to provision that you need. He's going to provide for you everything that you need because he is the most wise. But above all, let's do our best to maintain our marriages in the best way. And one of the ways that we can do that is let's be good to each other. Stop deceiving people. Let's not deceive one another. Allah does not like the one who lies and is deceptive. Let's not deceive one another. Let's be honest. Let's be trustworthy. If we can keep and emulate the characters of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, yes, we're not him, but if we can do that to the best of our ability, we will find successes in our relationships just as he has successes in his relationships. He married multiple wives and I don't know of any single story of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam divorcing any one of his wives. He remained married to all of his wives. That should be an example to us to say it can be done right, it's possible. But we have to be good people for us to have good marriages. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be good people who love and fear Allah. Ameen.